We got a key power throttle, chromatic head gasket and ACL race bearings and oil pump and of course the key power oil pan and we're gonna show you guys how we mod the K28 type R oil pump, test fit it and show you guys and of course talk about all the other things that you need for the details and even show you the tidbits that most don't even show and we're gonna build the whole block, the bottom end get it ready and of course even the head so hey this rebuild is gonna have a ported head so it's gonna be really really good and hey we're gonna give you something really really complete <laughs> Okay, now let's start with the K-Power Industries oil pan, the real rear wheel drive oil pan. Oh yeah, such clean work and the aluminum is really thick, so you know, this is durable. And you can see here, the interesting part is there's this, those trapdoor mechanisms. This avoids oil from sloshing left and right when you're turning. And this has been done since ages ago with track car guys or track racers that's not running a dry sump. So hey, this is just really, really cool, right? Okay, and now this. All right, now here's the bottom girdle. And we removed this. We actually removed it earlier on. I just put it back just to show you guys. But you know, I didn't press it in. It's just easy. Here's the oil jet. We, re we must remove that. And we get a 12 millimeter bolt and plug this. And it's, it's already threaded, so don't worry about it. But later on, the final time, we're gonna put three bond or Honda bond around it and then torque it to 18 feet pounds torque. That's a must, all right? Yep. Now here's the K20A oil pump. When we marker this, this is the part where you have to grind off or shave. And you know, there's a lot of, lots of videos in YouTube about this, but here we're showing you this. And now we've grinded it off. You can see now how it fits. And this is the block off plate or the relocator for the oil pickup tube of the K-Power Industries rear wheel drive kit. So we plug that in. You can see here, we finished grinding this off. Now we're gonna show you how it fits. And that's what you're supposed to cut or grind, whichever you wish to do. Both would work actually. But we just used the uh, grinder, for our porting bit actually. And here you can see the clearance is actually good, right? So now you can torque this, it's gonna be safe. It won't be hitting anything. Okay. And now let me show you guys the oil pickup line. Hold on. Let's leave this here, all right? Now here, it goes in on that side. Here's the K-Power Industries rear wheel drive oil pickup. Because the oil pan, the orientation will be, instead of front wheel drive, it becomes rear wheel drive. So the front and back is gonna be left and right. That's why there's a splash guard, the trap door system on the oil pan earlier, right? Okay, so it's gonna be like this. Now, let's go on to the next one. All right, now here are the ECL goodies, the main and rod bearings, and of course, the thrust washers. Let's cut this up, all right. Yep, we gotta open this because we're gonna use it soon. Or actually, we can start putting it on the main girdle, on the bottom girdle, because we're already here at the table. All right, on the desk. Okay, we unwrap this and pack, actually. Oh, the plastic is so thick. It's hard. Okay, here we got this. We install it carefully. We could actually start with a block, but hey, we're already at the, at the workbench, so let's do this now. Okay, we time-lapse this because, you know, it's going to get a little boring. Okay, we wedge the bottom of the girdle so that it's not tilting. All right. There you go. And this one here, I want to show you this. I hope CB Performance sees this and even pat downs of CB Performance, their builder and tuner. You see here, this is aluminum girdle, right? But the main saddle is steel, is forged steel. So what Honda did was they made the main saddles steel and then poured aluminum over it and now it's merged together. 
and from this angle you can see it better the reason why i mentioned cb performance is because they can actually make their vw aluminum cases like this with the steel backing on the saddle that's gonna be super strong right so now let's go ahead to the engine stand for the block okay here we are now we put the main bearings on the saddle let's make sure it is clean wipe it off yep okay it's all ready now we put the main bearings the acl means the other half you know okay now we install it by hand carefully of course all right make sure the tanks line up and it's level yes sir all right okay now we gotta time lapse the rest because it's gonna be a little too boring like that so there you go and then the fourth and then the fifth all right yeah okay now we, the torque assembly lead because you know this is gonna start up dry before it actually makes pressure within a few seconds so those crucial first few seconds is crucial to the condition of the main bearings and the rod bearings okay now we drop in the crank carefully of course all right careful careful yes sir all right now we install the thrust washer of course groove side out or my as my colleague says a different term the groove side faces the battle or the steel which is the crank so it's outside that's really good all right so groove side out there you go and pull the crank now on to the other side the second thrust washer there you go okay now here i want to talk about this um because i've seen that no not many people talk about it you see this groove here that's where the sealant starts go all the way here and then another another groove keep going and you stop there on the next groove the, the groove accumulates the sealant this way it prevents leak and it doesn't go too much the groove again and you keep going right and the reason why i share this is because if some people would use a little less sealant or you know permatex or whatever it might leak and people would say you did it wrong right but then if you put too much it starts gooping and might clog oil passages and they'll still say you're wrong or you did it wrong the so-called expert so here we show this so you guys know better so here we time lapse this as we put the sealant all right in exactly the place that we talked about all right there you go just a thin amount just enough to get everything covered not too crazy thick all right okay there and of course don't forget to torque assembly loop the main bearings on the block or the crank then we install the main bottom end or girdle sorry okay careful careful There you go, yep. Okay, now the main bolts, we all cleaned it up and oiled it well. Okay, we time-lapse this, so you can go. And we skip a bit, and now it's gonna be hand tight before the first step. Okay, now let's go get the torque wrench. Okay, now 22 feet pounds torque. And then after this is 56 degrees, so I'm gonna glue up my phone on the torque wrench. And I, I remember the GSR comparing PR3 head video that I made. I shared it to a B series group. Some dude laughed at it because I used an iPhone to show the angle. I could have edited it and used a different way, but it would be less visible for you guys. And what's funny is because I checked his profile, he was actually looking for a builder, he was willing to pay premium. That's funny, right? And I'm sure you guys have noticed that some Asian dude acting more American than actual Americans. It's funny how that goes, right? I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of those. Okay, now here, the nifty trick I learned from Dana, also known as Young Static. You guys check out this channel, it's really awesome, especially when he goes to the yard and check all the stuff. It's 56 degrees on this last and final step. Until you get it, you stop when you actually get to 56 degrees, all right? Okay, now we time lapse this so that, you know, it gets faster and not too boring. We actually just use the double-sided tape to, you know, to hold my iPhone onto the torque wrench. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty usable and pretty decent, actually. And we'll actually use this when we torque the rod cap, too, or the rod bolts. 
Oh yeah, it spins light. Even though it has assembly lube, because assembly lube is too thick, it tends to make it spin heavier. But hey, we turn this now. Let's get ready for the pistons. Yeah. Okay, now back on the desk, we got the ACL race bearing installed on the connecting rods, and now it's all good and ready. And if you guys have watched this video, when we assembled the B20 VTEC block, we discussed clearly, or at least with details, on why it's really important to have assembly lube on the piston pin end of the rod and piston pin itself. Because on startup, there's a few seconds before it develops pressure or oil pressure. That means these parts are running or rubbing dry. So it might gall and all that. I mean, it might not blow up, but once the piston pin is galled, it's no longer spinning or turning freely. That's probably rubbing more horsepower than you expect. So it doesn't hurt when lubricating this like this so that it's when you install it, it's well lubed until startup. There you go. And you know, we, we, we lavishly put assembly lube. You don't have to put a little bit or whatnot, as long as you know it's on the safe spot. And hey, if you put too much here, it's just gonna when you install it it's just gonna drip off on the connecting rod so that's still safe you know just as long as it's not on the bores all right let's ready all of this and put this aside so that we can go and start installing the pistons let's go wait let's wipe this so you know we don't get too messy on the workbench okay now alcohol on my hands first because i don't want things slippery and all that all right let's go let's go let's go all right, here we are now installing the pistons. You make sure it, the ring compressor sits flush on the deck. You tap it, that's so you can align it. Just light taps, you know. And there, and then you're gonna get it flush, and it's gonna be ready to actually be installed. All right. Once you get it flush, you have to see if he's gonna click some more. Come on. Oh, there. Okay, now it's perfectly flush and uh, totally compressed. Tap it in. There. That was easy, right? Sorry about that. Okay. Now we turn it for the rod caps. All right. Come on, come on. Get this on good. Yes. It has the tanks has to align from the same or from the connecting rod. Don't you know install it backwards. Okay, now with time lapse because it's gonna be a bit boring. Okay. Yes, sir. And then the next one, same thing. You tap it to make it flush, one more click, and then install. Then the rod caps. All are hand tight, by the way, because we're gonna torque it later on the first step and the angle. Alright. Now the next one. Yes, sir. Get it flush, click and go. And here's the rod cap now. Gonna be hand tight once again. Yes, sir, it's getting there. Okay, now the last one. We want the last one and then we're gonna start torquing this. Okay, there. Yes, sir, one last one. All right. Now it's going to be hand tight so that the rod caps get flush on the connecting rod itself. All right. Now we go with 22 feet pounds torque. The first step. And it's going to be quick and easy. There you go. And the next one, we'll just go time lapse this to go fast. All right. And then we turn it for the center ones. We're going to go fast again. Well, not really. Going to go here. 22 feet pounds. Yes, sir. All right. Then here also. Yes. All right. I go faster a bit. Well, okay, not yet. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna make sure it's 56. There. The rest is gonna be good, you know. The six and then here also then on to the last one all right now it's all done yeah all right let's turn it all man 
it turns really really good it, it spins lightly even with the pistons and assembly loop so hey we know this is good good clearances and we're gonna talk about that a little later yes sir all right let's turn it again wait come on okay now we test fit the k power industries flanged k20a oil pump all right because it's gonna be for rear rear wheel drive so it's gonna have a different oil pickup okay there all right and from this angle it's all snug you can see it's clearance really well so it's gonna be all good yep and then now we're gonna have to test fit the oil pickup here it is bolted on and all ready all right yeah now we're not gonna really seal this we're just gonna cover it so that it doesn't get any dust so we're gonna test fit the k power industries oil pan there we're just gonna put two bolts so that you know when we install we install the head it's not gonna fall off oh yeah now it's a real real wheel drive machine it looks really good it looks stout and strong the oil pan so this is gonna be good yep now we go back to the desk and we show you something on the cylinder head it's almost done the finishing touches are yet to be done but look at this or check this out the intake gasket the steel gasket for the k series because it's it's always accurate not really always accurate but closer to ideal and almost perfect so here you can see it's oversized just by a little bit but not on not to the left not to the right is perfectly centered so this is gonna be good so what i'm gonna do is cut the cardboard intake gasket based on this steel gasket and we're gonna use that to port match the intake manifold so here the main bearings we got the clearances down to 0 0.0015 and you can actually click here for the plastic gauging video so that you guys can do that and check on how to do that and the rod bearings is 0 0.0016 so it's actually near perfect right and yes we got the piston rings gapped or set the gap to 0 0.0015 so it's within the range because when we check that's how what we got so we made sure the second ring is a bit looser this way is gonna be ideally perfect and so we're gonna finish the cylinder head and then assemble it with a super tech valve seal set and then slap on the head onto the block and then finish it up of course once the manifold or the intake manifold gets fully welded because we ported the k power industries intake manifold we're gonna port match it to the head so yep unfortunately the video is getting way too long so we leave you with the current status of the cylinder head that's still needing port finishing touches or the finishing touches on the intake ports but the exhaust is almost there and you can see here but of course we're still gonna do a, a little bit of touch up on the exhaust this way it's all done and once it's done we're gonna port match the intake manifold onto this head and so you know on part two we're gonna have the rest of it done